good morning good morning to each and every one today i am going to discuss about mems mems stands for micro electro mechanical systems micro electro mechanical systems what is micro micro is of minute level it is measured in 10 power minus 6 mm okay what is the necessity of learning this micro level so actually mechanical students used to learn things in a macro level but as the days passed on as the technology has been improved the components has minimized the sizes not in bulk but to a miniature size minimum size so there is a necessity of learning the components in micro level so mechanical components mechanical systems in micro level is called as mems micro electro mechanical systems it has a lot of space in research and in academics also okay richard feynman was the one who has founded or contributed maximum to this uh, mems richard feynman he says that there is plenty of room at the bottom why can't we utilize that one so we are not utilizing the entire space so we have to utilize the entire space and uh, there is no need to have a bulky machines we can min minimize the machines size of the machines with greater effectiveness okay so uh, i'll start the uh, mems uh, contents contents so yes so my contents regarding this uh, micro electro mechanical systems are introduction to these course and what are the components in mems and also what are the fabrication process what are the fabrication involved in micro electro mechanical systems manufacturing technologies sensing and actuation mechanism what is sensing and what is actuation and mems transducers mems applications advantages and disadvantages of this mems and how to design the mems tools these are the contents to be discussed in this uh, uh, course so introduction to this mems mems or micro electro mechanical system technique of combining electrical mechanical as together as together on a chip actually we have separate mechanical components separate electrical components separate electronic components now automation has been came into existence now automation a combination of all these components as one so system technique of combining mechanical electrical and electronic components on a chip on a small chip uh, to produce a system of miniaturized dimensions we, we come across this word miniaturization miniaturization means reduce the size of the component so even though if we reduce the size of the component its effectiveness does not changes its strength does not changes it has more effectiveness so silicon is the uh, material actually silicon is the mechanical material but nowadays this is used in electronics okay universally accepted as mechanical material but now it is adopted for electronics so in this uh, course we discuss the material we take uh, silicon as a electronic component is electronic component for the manufacturing processes okay miniaturization we know about maximum or minimum but the word called miniaturization came into existence now uh, in this uh, mems uh, course the devices the devices or systems have the ability to sense and control sense control and actuate the micro scale and generate effects on my macro scale so from macro scale to micro scale we are reducing the purpose is to have greater effectiveness less cost more effectiveness 
all uh, this uh, advantage has been improved by this micro level. So, see, MEMS are made up of components between 1 to 100 nanometers, okay, to small sizes. So, all of you listen, we have a, a good understanding for this uh, miniaturization process. We have a good example how this process has been uh, utilized uh, for miniaturization. See, this is a physical gear. All of us know what is a gear to transmit power, is it not? This is a physical gear. This is the gear with a chain. This is the gear which, which have teeth gate teeth with a chain okay moves this machinery moves and functions same as a gear and chain to move and the function however the link in the chain is about 10 micrometers see how the chain uh, this uh, link uh, size is reduced or the chain link uh, link of the chain is reduced so if we have a bigger one the cost is more and uh, it may have a noisy sound but here as we reduce the size which have more effectiveness so the link in the chain is about 10 micrometers long that is less than the diameter of human hair see how the hair what will be the diameter of a hair diameter of the hair very very minute level is it not so that is less than this link of the chain is less than the diameter of the hair so this is the advantages these are the advantages why we have adopted this uh, MEMS okay components what are the components involved in this uh, uh, MEMS so here MEMS consists of micro sensors micro actuators micro electronics micro structures so this mems consisting of components consisting of micro sensors micro actuators micro electronics micro structures the actuator which makes the component to act effectively okay micro sensor which senses what what work has to be done okay electronics and the structure microstructure what will be the structure of the component these are this is the basics of the uh, components of mems so we'll de we'll discuss the detail uh, of uh, this uh, components okay, first one is microelectronics this is the brain this is a brain that receives the brain receives the sound signals is it not brain that receives processes and makes decisions so, microelectronics purpose is it's a brain which senses, receives, and makes a decision. The brain, the brain when you see anything, we uh, our brain uh, acts, and what the decision has to be taken, the brain gives an idea. So the same in the same manner, this microelectronics data comes from micro sensors to the microelectronics, micro sensors. And every one of nowadays, every one of us using sense sensors, even in your mobile also. When you impress your thumb, it senses that you are the person who are oper is operating. So, micro sensors constantly gather data from environment. See, if anyone makes sound, it simply uh, capture that is sensing. Constantly gather data from environment, pass data to microelectronics. Microelectronics is the brain where we can think and act according to it. Okay, pass data to microelectronics for, for processing can monitor mechanical, thermal, biological, chemical, optical and magnetic readings. It reads and gives the information what we have sensed. Okay, common used parameters are especially pressure sensors, temperature sensors and chemicals in biological uh, aspects these are the pressure sensors actually uh, we used to measure used to measure the pressure okay microstructure what will be structure will be extremely small structure 
as the sabhya as the course is mentioned that is a micro level very 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 small one extremely small structure built in into the surface or surface of the chip the structure is made on the chip extremely small structure built on to the surface of chip built into silicon of mems as i said silicon is the mems material even though it's a mechanical material now it is adapted for electronics micro actuator which gives actions acts as a trigger to active external devices micro electronics will tell micro actuation to act to act so some of the micro actuators so we have micro pumps micro valves micro valves for control of gas in mechanical systems we use this one micro actually we used to use a bulk valve now it was miniaturized to micro level micro valve for control of gas and liquid flows valve is to control the flows now we are using the micro valves micro pumps we used to use a bulk pump now it is reduced to miniaturized to smaller size micro pumps okay so the fabrication process so this is very very important topic uh, fabrication how this uh, mems are uh, manufactured or fabricated so we have how to deposit the material on the surface a substance has to be deposited on the surface for that we have two types of methods deposition method one is physical vapor deposition method and the one is vapor deposition method these are all experimental setups so especially this uh, course is an innovative research oriented course so physical vapor deposition method chemical vapor deposition method the patterning how the pattern should be made it is through lithography lithography is a process where the patterns can be made and after making the pattern we have a process called etching etching is to remove the minute level minute level of the surface if any roughness is uh, there still after doing the lithography process we go for etching that is wet etching and dry etching let us discuss in detail about this fabrication processes fabrication processes so all of us uh, after this covid all of us know about mask what is the purpose of a mask to protect ourselves is it not every one of us used in in covid is it not so here deposition deposition thin film of material mask anywhere between a few nanometers to 100 micrometers on on to the substrate a substrate a surface on which substrates layer by layer are produced so mems deposit technology can be classified into two groups as i said physical vapor deposition method and chemical vapor deposition methods so substrates are silicon glass and quartz thin films we have thin film deposition thick film deposition but we concentrate on thin film deposition methods so we have physical vapor deposition method chemical vapor deposition method these are all uh, this uh, experimental processes now we'll see the patterning so we patterning we pattern the material we transfer pattern means transfer the material on the surface so we have lithography is widely used uh, uh, this um, patterning processes of course we have so many methods in lithography processes we have photo lithography process where you will like is uh, uh, passed on to the surface and to the substrate uh, electron beam lithography ion beam lithography okay iron track lithography uh, technology and x-ray lithography so this photo lithography is very very important process so etching etching is a process where we can remove the material after this uh, the, uh, uh, what is that term <coughs> after this uh, lithography process after lithography process we can we should go for etching to remove the unwanted material still left over etching is a process of using strong acid to cut the unproduct part of a material metal surface to create a design so we are designing the component is it not so after this uh, lithography process any unwanted material left over we go for etching process 
So, itching, uh, there are two types of uh, itching processes. They are, they are classified into two, two. One is wet itching, another one is dry itching. As the word says, wet. Dip, the substrate, dipping surface in a solution, itching agent. A substrate into chemical solution that selectively removes the material. By wetting, wetting means uh, dipping the substrate into a solution. Next, dry itching. See, yes, sputtering is a process where we can remove the material. So, these are the even gas plasma also. These are these are the two types of uh, uh, itching uh, process. Now, we will go for manufacturing technology. How a component is manufactured? We have, uh, in general, we have three types. One, bulk micro machining, surface micro machining, high aspect ratio. Okay? So, this uh, actually we have machining process in mechanical terms, but this was replaced by MEMS by micro machining. Minute level material can be removed. First one is bulk micro machining, surface micro machining, high aspect ratio. What is aspect ratio? Aspect ratio is defined as the lateral dimension to longitudinal dimensions. Okay. So, let us uh, talk about the micro machining processes. Let us talk about the micro machining process. This is the oldest technology. Oldest micro machining technology involves selective removal of the substrate to produce a mechanical component. So, by laying the substrate on the surface and allowing the rail to fall on this uh, surface to get a required component. So, we have we are using the bulk micro machining. See, this technique involves selectively removal. See, on the surface, on the substrate, we use a uh, mask to protect the material. We have two types of uh, materials. One is structural material, another one is sacrificial material. Structural material, another one is sacrificial material. Structural materials are covered with a mask where the material is protected and the sacrificial material which will be removed to get a fine product, to get a fine product. So, did you get the difference between structural material and sacrificial material? We discuss, we involve these two terms while doing this micro machining process. While used, yes, this technique, even though it is a world technique, it is widely used. Widely used bulk micro machine techniques in MEMS, in chemical wet teaching, which involves immersion of a substrate into solution of reaction chemical that will etch, expose re regions of substrate at a very high rates. Okay. Next is Okay. So here, boys, let us have a, a diagram to explain this uh, uh, basic process of basic process flow of bulk micro machining. Okay, bulk micro machining. First of all, keep a substrate, lay a substrate on the surface. Then deposition of masking layer. As I said, mask to protect the layers. Mask layer. Structuring the mask layer front and back see here front and back we have deposited the mask okay koh is the itching reagent cavity and wafer through the holes see these are the required thing we require so view the top view results here a shows a cantilever what is the cantilever which is fixed at one end and free at the other end so we can we can measure the deflections of the cantilever and also cavity this is the inside part and the other one wafer through a hole wafers are the layers to identify it now next is surface micro machining surface micro machining see it is actually it started in 1980s and is a new and when compared with the bulk micro machining, this is an advanced micro machining process. Surface micro machining is an advanced micro machining process. Machining involves 
process is above the substrate. Above the substrate, the process starts. Material is added to the substrate in the form of layer. Layer by layer, we add on the substrate. Uh, uh, form of layers, thin films of surface of substrate which can act either sacrificial and structural materials. By laying the layers and layers, sacrificial layer will be removed which sacrifices to give a required shape and the structural material will be on the pattern. Yes. A structural layer which is free standing structure, a sacrificial layer on which structural layer is made. Sacrificial layer is removed and structural material is kept al along it. Okay. Yes, this is the same thing, same thing as it is uh, in uh, bulk micro machining, but this is, see, okay, I will explain in each word. Oh, deposit, this is the substrate on the surface and deposit sacrificial, this is a sacrificial layer. On the sacrificial layer, we keep a mask to get the required shape and the other part is removed. Structure of structure the sacrificial material layer. So we want to remove this part. So it has sacrificed itself to get out from that uh, surface. Deposit structural layer. Again, we are depositing what the structure which should be required. Structure the structural layer. And by removing this is uh, this all this this thing this thing was sacrificed and removed at the end we got the required component we got the required component high aspect ratio this is also an advanced one high aspect ratio micro machining combines both surface micro machining and also bulk micro machining both are combined to allow for silicon structure with extremely high aspect ratio what is the aspect ratio ratio of lateral to longitudinal dimensions lateral to longitudinal dimensions high aspect ratio Actually, extreme high aspect ratio through thick layers of silicon so so high aspect ratio mems technology enables high degree of immunity to high frequency high amplitude parasitic vibrations depth of the itch can be hundreds or even thousands of, of microns into the substrate. See, there is an advantage, advantage when compared with surface micro machining and bulk, bulk micro machining. This can penetrate, this can go into in depth of hundreds of thousands of microns in depth into this sub silicon substrate. Okay. Sensing and actuation time sensing and actuation what is sensing so when we get sound we sense a sense and we act according to it many microsensors based on different sensing principles for MMs have been developed such as chemical sensors gas sensor optical sensors some of them are piezo resistive sensor sensing and capacitive resistive sensing let us discuss about uh, time Piezo, huh? piezo resistive sensing. Piezo resistive. What is piezo? Piezo is a directory material. Piezo is a directory material. This is a diaphragm with a thick layer on which piezo, piezo uh, directory material is kept on. A diaphragm is a thin layer which senses. Resistors are usually built on silicon diaphragm. Deflections, deflections of the diaphragm leads to the dimension changes of resistor. By the deflections, we can identify that there is a sensing, uh, sense, there is a sensing that, that uh, something has been happened. Diaphragm leads to the dimension change of the resistor resulting in the resistance change because of the piezoresistive effect in the silicon. Okay, so, so capacitive Q is equal to CV. All of us know capacitive, which can store energy, is it not? Capacitive sensing uses the diaphragm deformation induced capacitive change to convert the information of pressure into electrical signal. 
pressure into electrical signals. So, this is all the same, but uh, we have the, the, uh, this uh, piezoelectric materials. Okay. So, with this, we will end up with these MEMS. Okay. Hope you have understood things. Thank you.